to another video and this one is a review today over an older set of figures but not quite retro review for uh, the category I placed them in for my retro reviews. Um, that is the Rebels 2-pack with um, Darth Maul and the Seventh Sister which I got for Christmas from my sister and um, it's very, very cool. I actually saw this guy at Five Below, which is where she purchased him, and was amazed that they still had these figures. This is something that I don't recall ever seeing on store shelves at like major retailers like Walmart and Target, but they had a lot of them at Five Below. They also have a lot of solo items at Five Below. So it was really interesting. It clearly is the Rogue One packaging, uh, which I really enjoyed and re enjoyed everything about Rogue One. Uh, this is when Rebels obviously was still happening, um, and we were getting really into the meat of the show uh, with the reappearance of Darth Maul and whatnot. But I actually posted this video, or I, I, I posted a haul video and then on Instagram, and I got comments on both mentioning how a lot of people did not even know this pack existed. So um, that says something, I think, a little bit about the uh, distribution um, issues that I think they had with these sets and some of them. Um, I think they're getting better distribution from Hasbro, but um, yes. Anyways, um, I'm really excited about this pack. I really like Darth Maul. Uh, getting a Rebels Darth Maul is also very, very cool. But um, you do see the two figures displayed here with art on the side. Um, I'm not a big fan of the way that Hasbro sticks like a whole lot of random stuff on the front. Um, they do it with the back, too. You get a small bio, but then you get a picture here. And then you get this whole big clunky mess that just doesn't look very good to me on a card back. But um, it is officially in like a little box. So um, I wouldn't necessarily call this a card back. You have to open it from the top. So anyways, um, let's go ahead and open it up and we'll take a look at the figures closer. So I just want to mention this is what it looks like. There's a lot of accessories with that. It's definitely like a deluxe pack. And then you get a whole bunch of uh, paper. So like instructions and stuff that were shoved behind this set here. So let's take everything out. All right, so here are the two figures, both very, very thin, but also very cool. And they come with so many accessories, so it's kind of a lot to unpack here. Um, some of the first things we get are very small, and this looks like some sort of spider droid. I did not read the instructions for this, to be honest, but it's a little weird. Looks a little mashed, but it just came out of, of the packaging like this. Um, so he's got some little red eyes, and he's black, and looks like some sort of like little bug droid. Um, oh my gosh, and there's head articulation. Wow, the head pivots on this. You probably can't see. Oh my gosh, it just came off. Um, wow, that's interesting. It's super tiny. You also do get a mask for the seventh sister because she does talk behind a mask so that is included. It's just plain black. Nothing nothing much to it there. Um, you get a lightsaber for Darth Maul, which looks really good. It's very thin again in rebel styling. And then it's got this like little guard on the side uh, because he's obviously recrafted his lightsaber. Looks pretty good though. Very interesting shade of red for the blades. You get the Seventh Sisters um, lightsaber, which is the classic like ringed double-bladed lightsaber, um, but it is fashioned a little bit differently um, than some of the others. So very cool to have another Inquisitor. I've got the Grand Inquisitor, the Seventh Sister, um, and then the uh, Second Sister. I think that's it, right? From uh, from Jedi Fallen Order. Then um, this is also the era that we're doing, we're still seeing with Star Wars, the really big bulky machinery clips. Sorry, there's a hair on it. Um, and they just are really clunky to me and I'm not a big fan. Um, I believe how this one works is Darth Maul hooks inside of it, just like that. And so he can control it. And on the side, there's a little peg and you can hook this apparatus inside of it. So you get this number and there's no way that this is gonna stand up on its own using just Darth Maul's feet. So it's it's really weird. It's not very realistic. I mean, I guess it's a fun play feature. Um, yeah, you can even have him control it like that. Uh, but you do get these two uh, like blaster things, which they actually have completely rubberized tips. So I guess they were so afraid at this point of people hitting other, you know, kids hitting kids that these are totally rubber instead of plastic. That is the first I've ever seen of that. Um, but you just select, uh, you uh, stick them in here on both sides, I think. There you go. And then uh, these are the buttons, I believe. And you just click them and they launch. It's just a really bulky apparatus that I'm is just going to go in the storage bin, to be honest, because it's kind of ridiculous. Um, but I guess, I mean, if you're a little kid, it's something fun to play with, maybe. Um, the last accessory that we get is a hood for Darth Maul. Um, and so you can put it on his head. And it actually looks pretty good. Not too bad there. 
So you can also put the Seventh Sister's mask on her, or second, Seventh Sister, yeah. Um, and she'll look real cool. So there you go. She's totally in a mask, and then if you want, she can, you can like barely see her eyes, or you can just remove it entirely. Um, so, uh, really cool. Now, looking closer at the Seventh Sister, or second, so I'm gonna get him confused the whole time. She's got a little place that you could put something on her back. I'll have to look into what that is. But she's really, really tiny. Um, her feet are, I think, the smallest I have ever seen in a Star Wars figure. So she will have to stand up with assistance. Um, teeny tiny boots and pants, just really, really thin, thinner than the Clone Wars for sure. Um, but overall, the detailing on it is really good. I mean, she's got some nice blacks and grays and white accents. Um, and then her hood is obviously like very pointy. Um, her face is painted pretty good. They did a really good job getting those teeny tiny eyes colored in good um, where they don't look derpy. Um, and so she looks great overall. Um, one thing with the Rebels figures that's kind of annoying is they don't have joints in the uh, elbows. But look how bendy this arm is. That's ridiculous. The type of plastic that it is made is almost a rubber. Um, that being said, since it's like that, she's not going to hold on to her lightsaber very well. Yeah, I'm trying it now and it's just kind of a joke. Um, there's just no grip retention with the hand because it's so rubbery that she just doesn't hold on to it very good, which is a shame actually, um, if, especially if you want to display her with a lightsaber. But those those joints are crazy. So her head does have um, a ball joint. Um, her shoulders just swivel, it looks like. Um, and that's it. They This is like a rubber arm. That is so bizarre. Um, the torso does not move. We do get some um, hip articulation that just goes back and forth and then no articulation in the ankles. A very weird figure in that way. Not a lot of articulation. She's five points um, with some rubbery arms. Um, taking a closer look at Darth Maul, I think that he looks really good. His paint overall is super nice. Um, removing his hood so we can get a better look at his face. They did pretty good with his face. His, his horns aren't very sharp. Sometimes that is a problem that Hasbro has with occasionally with their Darth Maul figures, with actually probably a lot of them, is they're just not very sharp. They're very rounded on the tips, probably to help kids from hurting themselves, but it almost just gives these like little blobular effects on his head. Um, but they are painted individually, so that looks good, and his face doesn't look too bad. I love the coloration of his chest. It's always really cool to see a, um, a shirtless Darth Maul to see how his tattooing went, because uh, he's a knight brother on Dathomir. He looks really cool. He's got this strap across his chest and some black pants. Um, there's a little bit of like kind of chrome boots, uh, but that's kind of it. He's pretty uh, monochromatic with black and red. Um, he does have a ball, a ball jointed or ball hinged head, ball jointed, that's what it is, um, and swivel, swivel shoulders and swivel legs and that's it. This Darth Maul's arms are not rubbery like the Inquisitor's is. And you can work his lightsaber in, but again, he's only going to be able to hold it literally in this direction because his arm, his wrists have no articulation. So um, for me, it's fine. These two figures are totally fine because I pose my three, three quarter inch since I have so many of them in vanilla poses. Um, so it's not a huge loss to me, but if you wanted to make a really dynamic setup with your three and three quarter inch, I can see where the five point of articulation is really going to inhibit you. Like I said, for me, it doesn't matter. Um, I'm just going to squeeze these in with the other rebel characters, but that is them. Um, pretty cool. I really like the way they look. Very interesting rebels characters. Love to have a Darth Maul. And of course, these are his robotic legs. I did forget to mention that. He doesn't look like a spider anymore, like in the Clone Wars, uh, with a really big, you know, legs, uh, by rebels, they look a lot more normal. Um, but overall, I think that they're pretty cool. Um, really nice little two-pack that my sister found for me for Christmas, so I enjoy it. Um, but let me know what you guys think in the comments below uh, for this pack. And as always, thank you so much for watching, guys, and have a fantastic day. Bye.